Hi, and welcome back to our coverage from AWS reInvent 2018. I am Ian Massingham from the AWS Developer Evangelism team, and I'm joined at the far end of this podium by Abby Fuller, Senior Developer Advocate in Containers and Linux here at Amazon Web Services. And we have two special guests with us. In this segment, we're going to be talking about a couple of networking services that were announced in a, a keynote last night here at AWS reInvent. Uh, called Monday Night Madness. Monday Night Madness? Monday Night Live. Get, Monday. My, get my keynote name. Midnight Madness yeah, and Monday, Monday Night, Night Live. Live. Right. Formerly known as uh, Tuesday Night Live. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and we've got a couple of experts that have joined us from uh, the teams responsible for these new services uh, that are going to tell us a little bit about the new launches. But first of all, can you just quickly please introduce yourselves and tell us uh, what you work on here at AWS? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Divya, and I'm a senior product manager in the AWS Global Accelerator team. Uh, and this is a service that just got launched uh, last night. Fantastic. And I'm excited to be here. And Brian Barrett, I'm a principal engineer in EC2's uh, High Performance Computing Group and uh, have been building EFA, a product we also just launched last night. Great, so we're going to kick off with a quick discussion on, on EFA. So the first question is an obvious one. Can you tell our audience what EFA stands for? And can you also describe uh, what kind of problem space this can help customers overcome? So what's the sort of intended use case for this particular enhancement? Yeah, so EFA is Elastic Fabric Adapter, uh, and it's a new network interface designed to help accelerate scientific and engineering codes. Codes that need many, many, many computers to solve. Big problems like uh, fluid flow over a wing to simulate new airplane wings, or uh, one of the more cool examples is uh, building faster F1 cars. Okay, great. And uh, so this, as a fabric adapter, it sounds to me like hardware. Did we create some new hardware design here? Uh, what sort of new technology did, technology did we introduce in order to enable us to create this service? Yeah, EFA is uh, three different pieces. There's uh, some instance level software to help accelerate the application. Uh, and then there's a, a hardware component, a new network device that will show up in your instance. And uh, the, the new network device takes advantage of two technologies we've uh, built recently. The first is our third generation Nitro system, which is our uh, accelerator for, for EC2 hypervisors. Uh, and the third generation is the one that enables 100 gig networking, 100 gigabit per second networking, which we also announced last night. Um, and the other part is a new custom protocol, uh, networking protocol for EC2 called SRD. Uh, which enables uh, reliable transmission without some of the problems that TCP traditionally has in, in the data center. And so those, plus some other hardware, enabled us to build uh, EFA for our customers. So the fact that you said that there's a new protocol that's been introduced there suggests that you need to have that same protocol stack at each end of the connection. So are you creating a cluster of machines which can communicate with each other using that new protocol? Is that essentially how you implement this? Exactly, so the, the type of applications are these big, one application scaling many, many, many instances, and they're all talking together via this, this uh, EFA protocol that, that we've recently released. And what kind of uh, performance can customers expect to see in terms of throughput and round trip latency between instances? So throughput will be the, the 100 gigabit per second in each direction, uh, and then latency is uh, sub 15 microsecond, and over the next couple of years, we'll drive that even lower. Uh, and combined, you should see uh, you know 10 to 20 percent performance improvement for these large scale applications. Great, and how can customers get started using EFA today? Which instance families is this available in? And what sort of prerequisites are there for customers that want to take advantage of this particular service? Yeah, so we're launching on any of the network optimized variants, which today is uh, C5N, uh, which we launched uh, last night, and P3DN uh, coming soon. And to get started, uh, we're currently in a preview, so there's a sign up page that you can get to from aws.amazon.com slash HPC, uh, and then we're looking uh, to go general availability early next year. Great, presumably we include drivers for this hardware technology inside our AMIs or armies or however you want to say it. Yes, exactly. Uh, when we uh, go GA, uh, both Amazon Linux and Amazon Linux 2 will include the drivers you need, and we're working with all the, the major vendors to also get them in 
you know, Ubuntu, SUSE, and, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Okay, great, excellent. If you do have questions about the EFA launch, please let us have those via Twitch chat. Abby will I bring your questions to the stage. Oh, we already have some, great. Speaking of that, yeah. <laughs> um, so one of them you kind of halfway answered, um, but I don't know how to say that. You guys need easier to say Twitch handles. But they want to know, do I just enable EFA and write my MPI programs as normal, or is there some sort of uh, EFA API that my programs need to interact with? So there is an EFA API, but the answer is the only people who really need to use that are the MPI implementers. For your application, uh, you'll just continue using MPI like you always have. Uh, other than a new option when you're actually launching the instance, there's very little you have to do as an MPI user to actually use EFA. Uh, I also have two questions from two separate people looking for a documentation and specs on the networking pro protocol. Um, we're we, this, the, the networking protocol is, is internal to Amazon because it takes advantage of a lot of our internal features. Uh, that being said, uh, I will go into a little bit of depth on, on how it works and what it does in a talk later tonight at 6.15 um, and uh, that will eventually be on YouTube for, for those not at the conference. Uh, where is the talk? Uh, it is... I'll look it up. In Venetian somewhere, and I don't know where. <laughs> for those of you that are watching on the stream, there's a couple of points to make there. The first is that all breakouts from reInvent will be available on YouTube, on the Amazon Web Services YouTube channel, just a few days after the show. So if we mention a breakout during the course of the Twitch program, uh, you should follow up on YouTube, and you can watch all of the content there. The second thing is that reInvent spans across six different venues and has around 50,000 visitors here. So when you see us kind of laughing about where we're supposed to be next, it's not a joke. We genuinely don't know where we have to go to most of the time. Um, and people had asked earlier, the videos have been being have been posted really fast this year. So I had a breakout session yesterday afternoon that's already gone up on YouTube today. So even if you're not here with us in person, you should be able to follow along pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close to day. Great. Right. Any more questions on EFA, Abby? Um, another name that I don't know how to say um, wants to know if this has any relation to the new ARM instances. Um, not today. Uh, at present, EFA only works on uh, the network optimized, and, and we don't have a network optimized ARM instance yet. Cool. That is all from Twitch for now. OK, great. So we're going to jump out of the data center now and uh, think a little bit uh, more globally in terms of this next service. So what was it that uh, was announced from your team, Divio? And can you tell us a little bit more about the service? Sure. Uh, so last night we announced AWS Global Accelerator. Uh, it's a new networking service uh, which you can use to improve uh, performance and availability of your applications, especially those that's intended for a global audience. Uh, so uh, uh, as a part of uh, the Global Accelerator settings, you will receive uh, static Anycast IP addresses, and these are going to be announced from all of our edge locations around the world. Uh, and Global Accelerator uh, takes your traffic and intelligently routes it to the closest healthy application. So we look at uh, geo proximity, health, uh, the health of your applications, and also you can uh, define some sort of weights, uh, and we'll honor them while uh, making the routing decisions. And this is a, a purely network layer service, so we support um, TCP as well as UDP protocols. So well, I guess we're solving a problem there for customers around ensuring good performance for applications globally. And also, does this address disaster recovery use cases? If I have multiple yeah. uh, regions that are serving my app and one of those regions fails or gets degraded, mm -hmm. do you automatically mark that as unhealthy and then divert yes. traffic away? Is that how it works? Yes, uh, definitely. So we have continuous health checking. Uh, and if your application in one region fails, we uh, detect that and automatically uh, and instantly reroute traffic to uh, your next uh, available region. So you can use it for an active, passive um, disaster recovery sort of scenario and also for an active, active case. So uh, that's the availability portion of it. Uh, and apart from availability, like you mentioned, uh, we also improve performance because um, uh, uh, the global accelerator leverages the AWS global network. So your traffic ingresses onto our network uh, as close as possible to your users, and uh, use uh, and um, it traverses our congestion-free, high-performance and uh, Amazon-monitored global network. 
So what? that's uh, for the performance aspect. Um, apart from that, there's one more um, key benefit, uh, and that's ease of use. Uh, because uh, I mentioned we provide static IP addresses that front your applications all across the world. Uh, you do not have to manage multiple IP addresses, one per AZ. So um, it's uh, very convenient for you as well. Uh, what kind of customers do you see that want to enable applications for multi-region operations? Are the particular sectors or verticals or particular types of customer that are more predisposed towards using this kind of service? What sort of use cases do you envisage as being the earliest adopters? Sure. So uh, we, we have multiple use cases. So the first one um, are the customers who want uh, really high availability, maximum uptime for their applications because it's highly critical uh, um, and customer facing. So uh, they do not want to rely on IP address caching by client devices. So if you have client de uh, devices or applications, uh, these can cache your IP addresses for longer durations and that can lead to unexpected uh, downtimes. So uh, customers who want to avoid that uh, are a really good use case. The second set of customers are you know, customers who want really high performance, so mobile apps, gaming, um, uh, video streaming, all of that, and they want to leverage the uh, AWS network, um, and that's the second type of customers. And we have the third type who uh, want um, uh, to whitelist um, a single set of uh, IP addresses in security applications like firewalls or uh, even your client applications. So that's the third set of customers that we have. Understand, understand. Yeah. I think you've got a demo here which shows a little bit as to how customers can get started with the service. So can you just talk us through that? So yes. Okay. Can we sure. get the laptop up on the screen, please? Yeah, uh, you can start the laptop. All right. So um, if you can see, I've already created an accelerator um, over here. And uh, one part of creating an accelerator is creating a listener, uh, which is a port in a protocol uh, that you listen to. And this listener is connected to two endpoint groups, uh, one in each region, uh, one in Virginia and one in um, EU Central one, which is uh, Frankfurt. And uh, I have uh, attached an uh, elastic IP address in each of these regions. Uh, so there is an EIP hosting my website on uh, in Virginia and another one in Frankfurt. And as a part of the global accelerator, I get two IP addresses which are static. So now what I do is um, I go to uh, Route 53, I have my DNS name, uh, www.mytravelog.org, which you can see here. And uh, I have uh, t uh, tied my static IP addresses as A records to uh, my DNS name. So you can see um, these IP addresses. These are my static IP addresses provided by my accelerator. So um, I have attached those. And now I uh, SSH into my EC2 instance in Virginia and do a curl for mytravelot.org and you will see uh, my application hosted in Virginia that's uh, coming up. Uh, now I exit and I SSH into my instance in uh, Frankfurt um, and basically do the same thing. I do a curl and you'll uh, uh, basically see that my application which is hosted in EU Central 1 comes up. So you can see the intelligent uh, routing which is being performed by uh, the global accelerator. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate a failover. So I'm going to go to my EC2 instance in Virginia. Um, and I'm going to quickly stop it just to see how my accelerator reacts. So I just stopped my um, instance in Virginia. And rather than doing a curl, I'll just uh, open up the URL on my web page. So now I go to mytravelog.org. Remember, I am connecting from Seattle. However, my application is routed to EU Central 1, which is Frankfurt, because I have shut down uh, my instance in Virginia. So you can see how uh, Global Accelerator instantly reroutes um, traffic uh, based on health, performance, and all of that. Great. Does that uh, yeah. service integrate with things like ALB or network load balancers? Yeah. Can they be the endpoints in my region? Yeah, sure. So um, we support three endpoints as of now. So one is application load balancers, uh, network load balancers, and also uh, elastic IP addresses. OK, so yeah. I can have a an, uh, an, uh, uh, load balance group in each one of my availability zones, or uh, each one of my regions, or a set of containers in each one of my regions, and balance across those two groups globally. Yes. Yeah, great. That's true. Super. Uh, I think that's all we need on how customers get started. It looks super simple to me. Do you have any questions on uh, Global Accelerator, Abby, from the stream? Um, we have one that I think Randall's going to take for us in chat, unless you'd like to, but it's to help with understanding an example of this usage for Global Accelerator. Is this similar to what's built into CloudFront, but you're exposing it to customers through a low, lower level usage? 
Um, but I think that that is a, a much broader question. So I think maybe someone's yeah. going to hang out and, uh, and answer that for us. Yeah. Um, maybe actually someone already did. Yeah. Uh, so far, nothing on Global Accelerator. Okay, great. So great. I think unless you've got anything else to add, we'll wrap this segment up here and we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Thanks for joining us on twitch.tv slash AWS. We're live at the AWS uh, reInvent event 2018 here in Las Vegas. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.